right, good morning, everyone. Eight o'clock. His name, Mike Johnson. He's an ultra conservative, hardline Republican congressman from the state of Louisiana, and he is the Republicans' latest nominee to become the next Speaker of the U.S. House. Will he? Well, we'll see a vote later today. All right, well, last night, Republicans nominated Johnson for the job. Now, if you've lost track, he's the fourth speaker designate since a group of hardline Republicans ousted Kevin McCarthy three, three weeks ago. Yeah, since then, the GOP's held closed-door votes to pick a replacement. Uh, yesterday afternoon, you may remember that they chose Minnesota Congressman Tom Emmer, the third-ranking Republican in the House, more of a moderate. He did vote to certify Joe Biden as president. If you blink, you miss it because hours later, after a critical post by uh, former President Trump on a social media platform, Emmer bowed out. Then the GOP named Mike Johnson as the new nominee. This group here is ready to govern, and we're going to govern well. We're going to do what's right by the people. We have a very busy agenda. We have appropriations bills to get through the process, but you're going to see this group looking, working like a well-oiled machine. We owe that to the American people. Now, Johnson is a lawyer who helped rally Republicans around former President Trump's effort to overturn the 2020 election. In fact, there's a moment going viral from mm -hmm. this press conference here where the yep. first question at this press conference came from a reporter asking uh, the potential speaker about his election denialism and literally was booed mm -hmm. by the lawmakers behind and told to shut that up. point. Told, told to, shut, to up. shut up. Virginia Fox. Said it, it was quite yeah. a moment. So if you haven't seen that online yet, check, uh, check that out. Uh, but very telling. Uh, now, uh, Congressman Johnson has only served uh, three terms terms uh, in Congress, but very well could hold the gavel later today. If, though, he gets the 217 votes needed to become Speaker, he would be the shortest tenured congressman to ever become Speaker in modern times. Again, a floor vote is expected later today, roughly about uh, noon. We certainly will keep you posted here on that. Uh, Scripps News, perhaps the end of a three-week-long drama Big perhaps. for the House yeah. GOP. All right, let's get to correspondent Benji Heyer in Washington. Good morning, Benji. Good morning. Yeah, you say perhaps House uh, GOP Vice Conference Chair Mike Johnson will try to seek the gavel at least uh, at noon Eastern, but will depend on, of course, what his colleagues on the House floor decide to do. And we've known in the past couple of weeks it will not be an easy task. He said late last night that the intention is to go to the House floor tomorrow, a.k.a. today, Wednesday, and make this official, bringing to the end potentially a wild saga. 22 days, 14 candidates, four nominees, three votes and count. This is not over yet. There were a number of Republican lawmakers that were absent from the roll call last night. It's possible that some of them are so-called never mics, uh, people who will not side with this candidate. But there seems to be uh, a, a real change from the vocal opposition that we heard when it came to the previous speaker designates, Tom Emmer, for a couple of hours on Tuesday, before him, Jim Jordan, before him, House Leader, uh, 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 House Spe Leader Steve Scalise. Uh, here, th there seems to be sort of this, this, this quiet, almost consensus forming around uh, the conservative Mike Johnson. I mean, take Matt Gates, the man who led the charge against former Speaker Kevin McCarthy, uh, which culminated in his ousting. Uh, Mr Gates said that we adore Mike. We think he's going to do a great job for the country for the right reasons. He's not necessarily a name that everyone has heard of. You spoke of his relative inexperience, would be the least experienced speaker in about 140 years to be elected. He has held no senior leadership positions. And as you touched on as well, already scrutiny of his stance on some issues, including the 2020 election vote, backing a, a lawsuit to try to get the Supreme Court to intervene on the vote counting in some of the swing states that Joe Biden won. But when it comes to the paralysis on Capitol Hill, he could be the man to finally make a breakthrough. All right, correspondent Benji Heyer in Washington. Thank you. Ryan Wiggins is the chief of staff with the Lincoln Project, a pro-democracy group formed by former Republican strategists created to beat Donald Trump and his supporters back uh, in 2020. It's a tough week for chiefs of staff, uh, but glad to, <laughs> glad, glad you're uh, you're back with us, uh, Ryan. Appreciate uh, <laughs> your insight. You flipping on anybody today? We, should we have anything we should tell us? Okay. Um, <laughs> not today. We're not today. Good to know. Wow, uh, what a week, and it's just Wednesday. Um, listen, I want to go back to a moment uh, that's, that's gone pretty viral on mm -hmm. social media. I mentioned a couple seconds ago when after Congressman Johnson was kind of done with the press conference, it was a reporter's turn to ask a question. They asked about one of his defining political characteristics, right. which was the fact that he was neck deep in the efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Listen to how 
the lawmakers responded. Here it is. We have that elderly woman screaming, shut up, shut up, and everyone booing. It, it's a fair, fact-based question. All right, so what do you make of that moment? Bigger picture, what does it mean that potentially, much like had Jim Jordan won, we may have a Speaker of the House? The body that certifies our election and the person running that chamber potentially could be an election denier who didn't want to certify the results of a free and fair election in 2020. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's it's really, really, really crazy watching the Republican chaos in the House right now, right? I mean, this is insane. The fact that we are where we are and it has taken this long for them to even get somebody who could maybe go to the floor and have the votes is quite something. And I still don't think he will have them. I still have faith in the people of this country to continue to put pressure on members of Congress and say, no, we are not going to have an election denier two heartbeats from the presidency. It's not going going to happen. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy times. I still think that there are some holdouts. I mean, you've seen all kinds of crazy things floated by the Republicans in the past couple of days. A brokered speakership was one of those things where you would have maybe McCarthy come back as speaker and you'd have Jim Jordan as, you know, the deputy or the assistant speaker. I mean, it's insane. They can't get their act together. And this is a feature, not a bug within the chaos caucus of the Republican Party, the Freedom Caucus as they call it. Um, this is, they want to shut down the government. They've wanted to shut down the government since January 6th of 2021. And so this is just the latest in doing exactly that, shutting down the government. So before Johnson's nomination, Tom Emmer won the internal vote. And everyone we talked to yesterday said that Tom Emmer was looking like the guy to do this. He I mean, he had support from both sides of the aisle um, and, and could actually work together. Um, but he very quickly dropped out after former President Trump uh, sent out a message on Truth Social yesterday. We're going to take a look at that. Um, he called Emmer a rhino and that he never respected the power of a Trump endorsement or the scope of MAGA. So why does the former president seem to have such a stronghold on the Republican Party, um, especially yesterday when he his legal troubles, I mean, they just seem, the dominoes have started to fall um, in, in several of his cases, um, but it, that doesn't really seem to matter. No, it doesn't matter. I mean, the problem is, is what Trump has and what the MAGA movement is, is a cult. And they believe every single thing he says. And so, no, this it does not matter at all. There's nothing that is going to happen to Donald Trump that is going to take him out of the hearts and minds of his most devout followers. And I call them followers because, again, it's a cult. He is absolutely in, tr in control. I think you see some of the more establishment Republicans right now realizing the power that they've given this guy by not holding him accountable in the four years that he was president and really not holding him accountable since he was president and uh, playing politics over, you know, what, what's best for the country and what's best for the rule of law. It's all coming home to roost. And it, it's, listen, it's, it's, it's going to be some tough times. I mean, this is going to be the nominee. I've been on your show for months now telling you guys that he's going to be the nominee. Nothing has changed. If anything, it's become more apparent that he is going to be the Republican nominee. And it is time for Americans to buckle up because he is a very real and present threat this year. And, so, and your, other, uh, your other candidate is going to be President Biden. And if everyone doesn't get on board with President Biden, then you're allowing a President Trump to potentially occupy the White House again. And that is a terrifying thing. And speaking of that, especially in light of just perhaps the most legally perilous day mm -hmm. that he's had between Jen Ellis and Mark Meadows and Michael Cohen on the stand in New York, you know, his inner circle now turning against him when their back is up against the legal wall. Why in the middle of all of that, which I think would scare the hell out of most yeah. people, why do you think former President Trump cares so much about who the next Speaker of the House is? Because he's a narcissist. And President Trump, former President Trump, it's very important to say former before his name, former President Trump is looking for someone who will bail him out of his legal troubles. He is relying on the Republican Party and a Republican Speaker to clear a path both for his legal troubles and, and for you know a potential you know contest if it comes to it again where he maybe can take the House and he maybe can get these votes you know uncertified. I think he is setting up for a crazy election this year where he is going to do anything and everything in his power to 
to win and he wants the people in power to help him, who can help him do exactly that. Really quickly, we're just about out of time. Earlier you said you still had some faith in the party that um, that Johnson would not get the 217 votes needed. Um, is there any concern that you have within the party that maybe people have fatigue and at this point, three weeks into this, they just want somebody to do it so they can stop looking chaotic, as chaotic as they do? Is it, do you have any concern that that may happen? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that right now, I mean, yesterday, you know, Lincoln Project released a, a video and it was, you know, everyone talking about the speaker race. And one of the things in there was Steve Bannon saying, you know, it's really okay if we don't have a speaker for a while. Again, this is the this is what the play is. They are really trying to shut down our government. They do not see a problem with that. That was the goal. And as far as, you know, having faith in the Republicans, no, I do not have faith in the Republicans. What I said earlier is I have faith in the American people mm -hmm. to continue to put, in, put pressure on their representatives. And I encourage anyone who is watching this today to do exactly that. Call your member of the House of Representatives and tell them not to put an election denier two heartbeats from the presidency. Ryan Wiggins, appreciate your time uh, and your insight. Um, thanks so much. Thank you.